Before I start this video, I want to tell you all a little story. In the last video, I briefly showed the Radeon X 1550 PCI card with the intent of using it in this video, and things were going fine until I overclocked the memory. Ever since then, the card was unstable, often freezing up the system even at stock clocks. Replacing the thermal paste did absolutely nothing to help fix the problem, and try as I might, I couldn't get a trustworthy benchmark out of the card. And see, that's the problem with overclocking. Sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you don't. So for now, I'll have to stick with my NVIDIA PCI cards. But enough talk, let's get to the point. Last time on The Obsoletist, we looked at PCI graphics cards to see how much better they are than integrated graphics. Now, the MX4000 and 6200 are back, and we're going to overclock them to the limits in search of the best possible performance. I had to use two different methods to overclock these cards since they are two generations apart, or four if you consider the MX4000 to be part of the GeForce 2 generation. For the MX4000, I used a program called NVTweak to add, well, tweaking options to the NVIDIA control panel. From there, I raised the core clock until the built-in clock test failed. And then the tedium began. What ensued was jumping into games at higher clock speeds looking for visual artifacts or instability. At these points, I'd drop the clock speed at 5 MHz at a time until my games no longer artifacted or froze. Then came the burn-in test. I let the card run 3D Mark 2000 overnight, and if the test crashed or froze, I'd reduce the clock speed further until it could complete an 8-hour run. I ended up hitting 335 MHz on the core, up from 250 MHz at stock. That's a 34% increase, for free. Then I turned to the memory and did it all over again, hitting 555 MHz from 400 MHz stock. For the GeForce 6200, I used MSI Afterburner to do the overclocking. For whatever reason, it wouldn't apply my overclock unless I changed the core and memory speeds at the same time. I also use 3 Mark 06 for this card since 3D Mark 2000 is DirectX 7 based and doesn't use any shaders. In the end, I got the core to 320 MHz from 300, and the memory for to 620 MHz from 532. These numbers aren't nearly as impressive as the MX4000s, but it could be that the power delivered from the PCI slot isn't enough to reach higher clocks. Whatever the case may be, 20 MHz on the core is better than zero. So, let's see how the performance stacks up with a more demanding lineup of games than last time. In RVGL, I once again used Clockwork Carnage mode, but this time on the Museum 1 track, and with settings maxed at 1600x900 and 2 times anisotropic filtering. Healthy gains all around from overclocking, and with a 38% boost for the MX4000 and a 14% boost for the 6200. Performance seems to scale almost linearly with memory bandwidth, which is something you don't see very often. Up next is Street Racing Syndicate, a much more demanding DirectX 9 title. This game was tested at 1280 by 960 at minimum settings, with the exception of high draw distance and model detail. The numbers here were definitely in the 6200's favor, since SRS really takes advantage of DirectX 9 hardware shaders. Unfortunately, the game tops out at 60 FPS, so the 6200 couldn't flex its muscles as much as it could have. Still, overclocking the MX4000 really helped with the minimum frame rate, making for a much smoother experience. Returning from last time is Unreal Tournament 2004, but the settings have been dropped to medium at a resolution of 1024x768. Only small gains were made from overclocking, small enough that I didn't notice a difference when actually playing. I suspect the PCI interface is a huge bottleneck here. New to the table is Blood Rain, an obvious Xbox port. At 1024x768 at lowest settings, except for texture detail which was on high, Overclocking did a whole lot of nothing. 
Performance gains were non-existent after overclocking, and the two cards are indistinguishable from each other in action. PCI strikes again. Another newcomer is Enclave, an action RPG originally released for Xbox in 2002, then for Windows a year later. And just like Revolt, Enclave was run at 1600x900 at max settings with 2x NSA traffic filtering, and just like Revolt, the performance improvement is more dependent on memory bandwidth than core clock. For Tribes 2, I left the MX4000 as stock clocks and let the game pick the settings for me, and applied the same settings across all configurations. At 1600x900, the MX4000 got a nice improvement, but the 6200 stayed exactly where it was. Interestingly, the overclocked MX4000 scored the best, and also has the highest core clock. Coincidence? I think not. Last up is Open Arena, using the same test as in the last video, but at 1600x900 and with 2 times NSA traffic filtering. Performance jumps a bit after each change in card or clocks, but neither one offers playable performance in the demo I used, although it does have an unrealistic number of bots. Overall, overclocking the MX4000 was extremely beneficial to performance, and in some games, the 6200 had noteworthy gains as well. I was most disappointed with Blood Rain, though. You really need an AGP or PCI Express card for that game. So, there you have it. If your graphics card isn't cutting it, maybe overclocking is just the ticket to squeeze some extra frames out of your favorite games. But be warned, overclocking isn't risk-free, and you might end up with a graphics card shaped paperweight if you're unlucky. If that's a risk you're willing to take, and admittedly it's a small risk, then higher performance can be yours for the low, low price of free. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.